Welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I'm your host and the boss, if you didn't know. And also, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, you know, just, just you know, it's the boss networks at YouTube. Just take a moment to like, like me and subscribe to the channel and also like the guests that come on also because they, you know, we need that. So, and also you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Sweet the Boss and, you know, whatever. And if you, and if you do want to come on and be a guest here, just some, you could just send an email to me at um, media at dbossnetworks.com. But anyways, I got a really wonderful person here in the studio today and she is coming and going and going and doing a whole bunch of stuff. So with no other further ado, I'm going to introduce to you Carol Lee Rainey, singer, songwriter. Hi. Hello. <laughs> there you are. Oh, my gosh. You got your piano out and everything, and, <laughs> and you're black and red. I'm getting ready for the holidays, baby. <laughs> so can you tell everybody where you come from, Caroline? Okay, I live in New York. Okay. and um, Oh, you live in New York? Great. Yes. Okay. North, north of the city. I'm not like right in the city. Otherwise, you would be hearing like ambulances at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> or taxis honking, you know how it is. So you're from New York and your background? Um, well, I lived for a long time in California. Okay. That's probably why I don't have a New York accent. Oh. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't um, have to. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So I spent a long time living in California. Then I came back to the New York area and uh, been here for quite a while. So how long have you been in the music industry for? Well, um, actually, I've been singer songwriting for about four years. Okay. And, um, you know, like completely obsessed with it and loving it. But I did it a long, long time ago. And um, I stopped because I had kids and wanted to be a mom. And uh, thought I was done with music. Turns out I wasn't. And it came, wow. roar, it came roaring back, you know? And I was like, well, what is going on? <laughs> so you're always an entertainer once, you know, even if, you know, you had to put it down for a bit. So now you're revamped or reincarnated back. Definitely. Yes. So any of your family members or anybody is... Um, you know, or in the entertainment industry? Um, no, no. Wow. No, just me. Just... <laughs> so back... <laughs> That's okay. So back in the day, what did you, what did you sing? Did you sing the same type of genre of music that you sing now? You mean back when I did it a long time ago? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, that's such a great question there. I could say that there are some themes that weave, um, like I think my very basic beginnings were in folk music and country and, um, I weaved a, some of that back in today, but the big difference is I have much more life experience. And so when I used to get stuck about things I wanted to say, there's no issue now, you know, like you're here on this earth and nobody goes and skates and there's things I want to talk about and things I want to share with people to uplift them, inspire them. Cause it's like, I've been there, I've done that. And you know, if there's anything I can say or do in my music to make a difference in someone's life, it's really my dream. So what would you tell somebody? Um, well, I would like to inspire them. Uh, any any artist or somebody that's doing the same kind of trade as you and the same kind of you know journey. In your oh, I mean, how would I how would I inspire other artists? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I really believe very strongly that from like one artist to another, I would say, you know, truly 
and focus on your passion, whatever that is. Like if, if it's something you want to say, if it's something you want to sing, if it's um, an if it's a particular instrument that you play, just put your whole heart and soul into it and never second guess yourself and really hold on to your dream. Because honestly, at the end of the day, we're only here for a minute. You know, when you look at it with that perspective, we're just here for a minute. So it's your minute and you have the power to make your own movie and direct it any way you want to. And if somebody else doesn't like it, just like walk down a different road. You know, there's lots to choose from, but just, you know, you got to be true to yourself. And if that means fulfilling a particular dream, you better fulfill it because you have like two seconds to do it. Wow. Well, that's, that's, that's great advice. So what inspires you to do what you do every day? Um, what inspires me? That is also another great question. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, I think that there is so much going on in the world right now that inspires me to inspire other people. For example, um, during this holiday season coming up, I know because of COVID and because of climate change and fires and all kinds of other things, there's a lot of people that are very ill or that have passed on or some people that are going to be having the holidays this season and they might not have someone to share it with. Well, a couple of years ago, I was feeling very insecure and very paranoid and anxious around the holidays. So I wrote the song, for example, called The Wild Coyote, which is how this whole concert came about. Because I was thinking to myself, um, you know, I'm feeling really insecure. I'm feeling paranoid and anxious. I'm by myself on this holiday season. How am I going to get through it? And I thought, wow, if I could just imagine like a coyote that sneaks into your mind, if I could imagine that I could chew it away or scare it away, maybe I could pretend it's going away with my insecurities, my paranoia, my anxiety. And I started using symbols to empower myself and to get rid of all of my eccentricities, you might say. And it, it really, it really started working and it started to help bring me more joy. So you used the animal, a coyote, which it seems like that animal sometimes is a very vicious kind of animal, but you chose that animal. What is it because that relates to you? Or well, I actually chose that animal because if you think about it, anxiety, paranoia, and depression are all vicious, right? Woo. They're as vicious as a coyote. So instead of saying I'm depressed, anxiety, or paranoia, you can say, oh, you know, I woke up today and the coyote was back. It must have slipped out of the woods and got into my, uh, into my brain again. Well, you know, there it goes. I have to let it out because when you are experiencing holiday season, you might not have someone to share it with, or mm -hmm. you know someone that might have passed on this year because of COVID or something. Mm -hmm. You have to find an anchor to get yourself grounded and know that you're okay. There's nothing else you can do. You're doing the best you can and just to love yourself. Wow. You know, because a lot of people will wonder, okay, the coyote and, you know, and so, you came up with this wild concert unplugged. That's the name of the song or that's the album? Um, ironically, the song is called The Wild Coyote and the concert is called The Wild Concert. Because wow. um, ironically, when I did this concert, <laughs> I was feeling wild because I couldn't be wild because of COVID and all the restrictions. Okay. So, I thought to myself at that time where no one's allowed to be wild. No one's allowed to really be themselves because we have to wear masks because we have to sanitize because we're have to sit six feet away because we can't go here. We can't go there. There were so many restrictions and it made me even feel more wild than I normally feel. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the coyote. So you were releasing one of the coyotes. <laughs> 
Exactly. Exactly. And but then on the flip side of that whole concept, I thought to myself, you know, if there is anything that COVID has taught us, it's it's taught us a lot. But one thing it really has taught us is that to be wild inside ourselves helps us pursue our dreams. Because if we're not worried about what people think or what we want to do really with our dreams, then that's really the wildest part of each and every one of us. And to me, that's the essence of being focused and letting your dream come to fruition is not caring about what anyone thinks, but doing what really makes you happy and feel uplifted and passionate. It's all about your passion. So basically before the COVID and during the COVID is when you start to break out your second time to come out. It's when I um, did, I did this, this wild kite, this wild concert during COVID. Yeah, I definitely did it, but I, I was definitely writing before COVID. So you got a lot of stuff in the archives there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you something like if you're feeling shy or you're feeling um, inhibited in any way, shape or form, well, COVID is going to take you right out of that. COVID's going to say, look, if you don't like the way I feel, what can I say? You know, it really brings you back home to yourself in the best way. So, and it makes us love one another more, right? We're not afraid to hug more. We're not afraid to say, I love you more. We're not afraid to say, thank you so much more. You know, it's, I think those are the positive things about it. If there is such a thing. So you feel more, um, I, I, this song, it seems like it's going to help a lot of people with, um, mental health, you know, their mental health, you know, it's not meaning that they're, you know, off there, but some people have some mental health issues due to the COVID. Oh so yeah, this song is because I'm I'm just feeling it from you that you you're out there to help and you want the song this song to really soothe and help and bring people out and realize that you can you could uh, you could release the coyote by saying that it's you know that instead of saying you have anger or you have that just say I'm releasing the coyotes back. Yeah, it just it <laughs> makes it more manageable. You know what I'm saying? And even in my song, Anchor, for example, which is also in this concert, um, Anchor, um, you know, depression and anxiety are so real. And there's a lot more, um, you know, going on with mental health these days Mm -hmm. than there was before. Or it's being spoken about more. It's being more accepted. And that's a good thing. So are you you someone that has went through a mental health, you know, issue? Or, you know, and then now you want to make sure you're, you're releasing these songs to help people. Right. You know, I, I'm not going to be shy about this. Like I've definitely had my moments of darkness. Okay. There's no question about it. You know, I've definitely had my moments of darkness. And because of that, um, I can really speak of it from experience. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of artists now and a lot of people are coming out with more of the mental health issues and things that, you know, and things that you wouldn't think that maybe was a mental health issue. It is, you know, a lot of the, the, the sports people, a lot of the singers are coming and saying, you know what, I have, I had a problem with this. I have a problem with, of performing, even though I'm a performer, but go, I have something when the, maybe the people ask me something and they break down. So there's all different types of, you know, mental health issues that we do. I'm not a doctor or anything or psychologist, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? But you know, but people are no more now expressing themselves a, a lot more about this. Yeah. I think it's, um, they're feeling like it's a, it's a, it's a more acceptable conversation. Yes. And people really genuinely want to help. Um, we don't, I mean, nobody wants to see someone suffer. And when yeah. someone else is in pain, especially someone we love, um, we want to embrace them. And I do believe it's part of our responsibility, whether you've been depressed or you suffer from depression or you're feeling good. I think it really is part of all of our responsibility to reach out, 
to anyone we think is suffering and embrace them and let them know that we care. And you love them. Love them. Love them with all your heart, you know, let them know that you're there for them. Whatever that means, it's just to listen, you know? Right. So people, you know, you know, I, you know we're, we're sticking here for a minute because it's something maybe it's got to happen for you that something is, is releasing out because you're coming back out and you're coming out in a time where it was a pandemic and we're coming through it a bit now, but still, and you, you're releasing this, this um, album and your song and all your songs you're doing is relating to people with some sort of issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, I've had, you know, I've been through my own bumpy road, my own darkness, you know, I mean, there's some millions and millions of people out there that have, you know, gotten divorced and been single mothers. That's been my path, you know, and it's been very difficult. And because of that, you know, you one day find yourself, you know, on the floor, you can't get up because you can't believe how much you're suffering. But then you get up and you find that strength inside yourself somehow. And I've been there, done that. So, yeah, it's my responsibility to reach out and share with, you know, all the single moms and all the single dads yes. and anyone who suffered through divorce or depression. Like I've been there, you know, you're going to be OK. It, it, it doesn't feel like it, but you're going to be OK. And I appreciate you sharing that with people because now people will be more inclined to reach out, you know, reach out to Carolee, you know, like she's been through it. She's been there. Oh, yeah. You know, you've been there and it's been, you know, and and you came through it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I mean, honestly, I didn't think I was going to come through it, but you know, coming through it is such a celebration. It is just such, it's one of those things you celebrate in life. You know, like I came through it. How amazing is that? And then to come through it and then get to do this is, wow, it's just beyond my wildest dreams. So what about your children? Did your children, how did you, did your children know you were going through something when you were going through what you're going through at this time? Or they just kind of, or you just kind of put on a straight face and Actually, I got a lot of my, <laughs> I got a lot of my strength from my children. Wow. They they are amazing humans and um you know, you know deeply compassionate and in in some ways I feel wiser than me. They just you know a lot of we we give birth or we adopt or however we bring in that soul to our family. And these precious souls are who they are before they get here. And they're just going to develop their own personality and be who they are. And, you know, my kids have been a true sense, a true source of strength for me. So, um, you know, they've given me like permission and freedom to do what I, to do my dream. Wow. I feel is, is such a blessing, really. Right. Yeah. So who... You, so who would you like to work with that you haven't worked with? Oh, I haven't worked with <laughs> many people, so I want to work with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, yeah, but who would you like to work with that you, like maybe, you know, you said in your head, oh, you know, I'd like to do something with this or collaboration or something with someone. You know, I know this is going to sound, uh, there's, there's quite a few people, so. Yeah, you could say. Okay, well, you're, you might, never you know. Might, you might, yeah. I'm going to say something. It's going to, you're going to be like, what? But I absolutely love this Justin Bieber song called 10,000 Hours that he did with Dan and Shay. Wow. Like, I listen to that song every morning I wake up. I want to dance to it and everything. And sometimes when I'm writing my songs, which is every single day, I think to myself, okay, what would Justin, Dan, and Shay? Um, how would they add an, a harmony to that line? What would their sense of harmony be? And what would they take away or what would they add? Like, I, I wonder, you know, so that would be an extraordinary and very exciting event <laughs> if that ever happened. And I understand that, uh, you know, Justin Bieber is out of Canada originally. Right? Yes. 
So <laughs> your neck of the woods. Yes. So that's all that's all you'd want to work with? Oh no, 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 no. I'm just saying that's like I was just one of them. I was pretty much thinking about that today because I was working on um, I'm working on a bunch of new songs. I'm making a new album right now. I'm in the middle of a new album. We're recording it down in Nashville. And Nashville. <laughs> was down there um, last month and going back there in a few weeks. And it's been very, very exciting. Um, so I'm trying to finish up some last minute songs to, for our recording. And um, so because of that, I was thinking in my mind about some lines I was having a little trouble with. And I was like, gosh, Justin Bieber was here. What would he do? How would he sing this? You know, <laughs> Just having one of those funny conversations with myself. <laughs> right. So you're coming back in the scene. So I know you're going to sing some songs here for us today. Yes. Are you? So are you going to do it on the piano or a cappella? How are you doing it? Um. Well, let me tell you something. We have <laughs> we have a we have a menu. We have a choice. Okay. And I can start with, um, well, I mean, I was just going to do what, one or two songs? Yeah. But it's a, completely up to you, but it, it, I have yes, to you can do two. So we want to hear, this is what we, we want to hear people. <laughs> okay, that, that's I, that's okay. very exciting. So, what a bit of a, so I've got my guitar you? right here. Okay. And I can start out with doing um, my song Anchor, which has been my anchor through this journey, this song. Wow. Um, that song yeah, I was Anchor. Anchor. You made that song called Anchor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this song, um, you know, I kind of, it was one of those moments I felt myself, you might say, flying away from the earth. And yes. uh, it's a, can I tell you a second about this story? Yes, yes this you is, can. You got oh my God. So I actually had a date by myself. I was going to go and get a little something to eat in my little town and come back and write a song. I had a songwriting date with myself that night. Nobody was home. And, <laughs> um, you know, I came home and I wasn't feeling particularly well. So I went to bed. And then the next morning I woke up and said, you were supposed to do the songwriting last night. You didn't write this song. And I felt really, really bad. So I got, got up out of bed and I went to the kitchen table and I saw this napkin and my phone was right next to it. Nobody was home. And um, I thought, what are these words? And I pressed the uh, voice memo on my phone and there was the song Anchor. And I don't know how it got there. It was my voice. It was these words on the napkin with my handwriting. What? I'm not kidding you. And you and that's and the song was just like I don't even remember. It was in a very unusual experience, and that's how the song was born. So that song, this song was born when it just came somehow appeared in your phone. It was like it was meant for you. Yeah, it was kind of like a channeling. I mean, I, I believe I did write it, but I think I was in the state of mind that I was trying to rescue myself from, okay. from some darkness. And this song rescued me. And I, I wrote the song, but it was so deep and it went so far for me underneath the surface that I actually don't remember writing it. So, so that this one is that song on this um, album or? Oh, yeah. Yes, this song is on the album. I was going to sing it for you now. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're on. It's you're up. All right, no pressure here. Okay, this is called Anchor. Anchor, anchor, hold me down. Till I walk away I owe my love to you Then you disappear I don't know how to be My bones 
Rooms are hot and my blood's cold. My thoughts are running round, 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 round. Spinning through the air, yeah. The waves are running down, 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 down. Hey, girl, hey, girl. Oh, mistake. Walking out to the sea. Pelicans are screaming over my head. I can't barely think. My bones are hot and my blood is cold. My thoughts are spinning round, 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 round. Spinning through the air. The waves are crashing down, 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 down. Anchor, anchor, on the stair, I'm floating on my back. I'm floating on my back. I'm staring at the crystal blue. There's a cloud flying over the moon. My bones are hot and my blood is cold. My thoughts are spinning round, 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 round. They're spinning through the air. The waves are crashing down, 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 down. Anger, anger. Feed me death. Bring yellow roses to my doorstep. Feed me the rain from my soul. Whatever you do, don't call me. My bones are hot and my blood is cold. My thoughts are spinning round, 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 round. They're spinning through the air. The waves are crashing down, 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 down. Anchor, 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 anchor me. Don't feed me a sea. Wow. <laughs> wow. You see your little doggy there is listening to. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they like to hog the spotlight, let me tell you. I know, it looks like it though. <laughs> oh my goodness. He just sat in there between between the between the piano where you were singing and he's like, I'm going to get in this interview. <laughs> oh, and you know they will, you know, that that's their MO, you know. Yes. So what's the next one you're going to sing for us? Okay, so I have to move a little bit on... Um, Okay, this so you way, want to I take a little commercial good. break? I can take a commercial break. Oh, no, I'm good, unless you want to. Oh, no, it's okay. I didn't know. Okay. I had to move around. I'm you have such a great today. laugh, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Does everybody tell you what a great laugh you have? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that is something. Pretty terrific. Um, yeah. It really resonates your joy. Thank you. So let okay, me so this you. song, I'm sorry. Go tell us about the song first before you go into it. Absolutely. This is called The Wild Coyote. Woo. And we already spoke about this song about, um, you know, the idea of especially, you know, I mean, the holidays are very joyous and loving with uh, for many, many, many people. And for some people, it's it's lonely and mm -hmm. um some people might be getting a little sadder or depressed because they might not be able to share it with those that they love or those that they've lost. So it's just an idea of, you know, using an animal that you can shoo away out of your mind and the animal represents your anxiety or your depression or um, your paranoia about anything. 
and you like just envision that animal and you just literally push it away. And I believe that can help empower us. I really do. Because the other holiday is, is, um, is Thanksgiving and that one, a lot of people are going to yeah. feel down. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, well, you know, honestly, a lot of people, I think everybody feels grateful about something, you know, and then it's a hard day for a lot of people and it's a beautiful day for a lot of people. It's, you know, it's a twine cost. Yes. But, you know, so we're going to watch Carolee Rainey sing this song that she's going to be. When, did you release the album yet or no? Is it released? Yes, it just came out on uh, November the 12th. Oh, my gosh. It was just out. four days ago. <laughs> yeah, it just came out literally four days ago. The date was actually changed a few times. But wow. it was and and you know what we call it unplugged because um it's just really me on piano and um guitar basically you know during covid it was pretty hard to assemble a band and get it all like that oh. so so it's uh, indicative of our times and you know you make a record during a pandemic and yeah it's just going to be you on piano and guitar so um it's very raw and uh simple and I like that because I'm a simple gal and my feelings <laughs> are raw on my sleeve at all times. And, uh, you know, it really is, I mean, what you see is what you get, you know? So who did you perform this? Is This is just you and, and you performing all the songs, correct? Yeah. And, and composing it, or did you have somebody that did the, the mastering and stuff for you? I mean, I wrote all the songs. Mm-hmm. I've, I've written all the words and lyrics to everything. Okay. Um, there are actually two cover songs on this album. I've, okay. There are seven songs on the album and five of the songs I wrote myself, uh, words and lyrics. And then um, two of the songs are cover tunes. One is a Ricky Lee Jones song called Lucky Guy. Mm -hmm. And one is an Ed Sheeran tune called Happier. Wow. And, uh, and then uh, other than those two, the other five are originals. And, um, but I did record it in the studio and, um, some of those songs are on YouTube right now okay. and everything is on, on, um, Amazon music and iTunes. So people can feel and it's unplugged, people. When she says unplugged, it's unplugged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really unplugged. So um, yeah, I just, you know, it's just real simple. All right. So blow me away blow everybody all the viewers are watching that they want to know <laughs> all right all right i hope you all like it yes all right here we go No. 
The instrument, you just a natural, you just, it was nothing for you. Just turn around and play the piano. People are going to be like, wow. Oh, wow. It's Carol Lee. Woo. <laughs> <You're>, thank you. <laughs> what more? I'm telling you, this is great. What more can we expect from Carol Lee? Gosh, I know you'd say you're going to Nashville. Yes. So um, I'm really excited about the whole new crop of songs that I'm writing. Um, I don't know, it's been, a, it's been such a joy. Some of them I actually wrote before COVID. And I remember the last trip I took to Nashville was, um, I flew in, I flew back home March 7th, 2020. And uh, our, our little town closed down like March 13th. We all just shut down. So I, I, I felt like I just got in under the gate there. And then there was a whole year and a half um, where I didn't go anywhere, just like everyone else. Um, and then um, during that year and a half, so much changed in the world um, with my family, with my friends, with myself as an artist. So I just started writing like crazy again. And, uh, and, and these are some of the new songs that will be on the album, including a couple of them from before COVID. Right. So the piano, you play the piano, you play the guitar. What else do you play? Um, <laughs> I just play and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two instruments I play, and then um, yeah, and that and that's 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 enough for me. Y'all, that well, it's not. So you teach your kids how to play piano and stuff like that, or no? Um, actually, it's interesting. My son plays cello. Um, my wow. daughter plays piano. She's getting into some some songwriting, but um, I couldn't. Uh, I I am not. Uh, like I don't read music. I just uh, sort of hear it all in my head and then I play it, if that makes any sense. So I your don't. talent, you, you have your own talent. It's like my own language. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like like you might speak three languages. Like, do you speak another language? Do you speak French or? Yeah. Oh, see, that to me is unbelievable. It's such a beautiful language. And mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for for Americans, when we go to like airports and they announce everything in four different languages, I, I'm I'm just appalled that we weren't all raised to speak multi languages like they do in like every other country except ours. 
<laughs> so I'm in my own language. It's called music. And I play the piano this way and I play the guitar this way. And uh, it's like my own like little language. So what's the most anything crazy happened to you while you performed or mishap or a blooper? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, you have a day or two. Um, so many things have happened. Oh, my gosh. The worst thing that happened, probably one of the worst things that happened was I was at this club in New York City. Um, and my guitar could not be amplified because the battery went dead. Oh. And I, I was just beyond embarrassed. So I mean, what did you do? Did someone lend you a guitar or no? I, I, you know what? I, I can't even remember. I think, <laughs> I think somebody did lend me a guitar, which is really bad because, you know, you're used to, you know, yeah. like your favorite pair of jeans that you wear or your favorite shirt. It's like that with your guitar. You don't want anybody else's guitar. You just want your own. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's too big. The strings don't sound the same. It's like all that stuff. So um, that was pretty darn embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Cause it shows you're human. Things happen. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Oh, a funny, very funny story. Um, uh, last month when I was on my way to Nashville, um, I was very anxious about the possibility that I might have to check my guitar. You know, that made me very nervous. I was very determined to bring the guitar on the plane and put it like in the um, overhead, you know, thing. Yeah. And I hadn't flown this airline before and it was Southwest. And I um, went on the plane and they were so kind to me. And they said, you can put your guitar right up here. I was really happy. So I put the guitar up there. And, you know, everyone starts walking on the plane and some guy takes his big baggage thing and he wants to put it right where my guitar is. Oh, and so I literally stood on my seat and I'm like, <laughs> you can't put your bag there. There's my guitar. And like everyone's seated and they all look at me it's like a reality show. Like they all look at me, then they all look at him and they're like, D don't mess with her. You don't put your bag there with that girl's guitar. And this guy, like he was a big guy, right? He took that bag down and he kept marching down the aisle. And then, and then the next person tried to do it and everyone else that was sitting around me, they're like, don't put your stuff there. That girl's guitar is there. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody started getting involved. Everyone was involved. It was, it was quite hilarious. And it was just, it was very funny. So, <laughs> so you have any shout outs that you want to give Carolee to anybody? Um, a shout out, meaning where they can find my music or well, you can, well, anybody that helped you, you know, produce this album, maybe you want to. Oh my it. gosh. Oh, the wild coyote. Um, the wild concert was filmed at the factory underground in Norwalk, Connecticut. And all the folks there were tremendous and very supportive. It's like a big family. And, um, I am on this fabulous little label that I feel very, you know, grateful to be on. It's called Sapphire Records. And um, right now it's very exciting because David Veslaki and, uh, and Craig Wilson are my two co-producers and they have uh, joined me on my current album down in Nashville. And okay. um, they're, you know, we're doing all kinds of great music together. And I'm very great. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Okay. And where's, where can people find you on social media if they got to find you? Okay. So on Instagram, I'm at Carolee Rainy Tunes. Okay. And um, everyone's so and so music. So I said, I'm going to be so and so tunes. Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm Carolee Rainy across the board Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. My. My uh, website is uh, 
CaroleeRainyTunes.com. Wow, I like it. CaroleeRainyTunes.com. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. my website. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a pleasure having you on here today. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I even sang two songs. Thank you. You got to watch yourself too because you look so good and comfortable. Well, that's because I'm in my living room. Yeah. So, well, you're in the comfort of your own home doing what you do best. <laughs> yeah, I always have the audience of my dog, so. <laughs> well, your dog, well, your dog was definitely in, in it. <laughs> now I put them to sleep, you know. Oh, God. Well, but I want to say thank you so much no for having me on this great show. Thank you. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's for all the people that have tuned in and listened. Um I wish everybody a beautiful Thanksgiving and um, very happy holidays. And, uh, you know, it's another year and we're all pulling through and doing the best we can. And, you know, just anchor yourself and hang on to your to your inner strength. Well, that's some that's some wise words. And find out who you're what, what which coyote are you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, right? Which yeah. coyote are you? And if you missed the, if you guys didn't miss the episode, we'll go back and watch it on YouTube at DBoss Network, so you'll see it there. But anyways, <laughs> I want to, I do again want to thank you, Caroline Rainey, for coming on today. And you know, go support her, you guys. Go, um, you know, like the album. Go see what she's doing. A lot of big things are coming up for her in 2022. So you know, that's it. So anyways, I want to thank the viewers tonight for watching and keep on supporting the channel, please. <laughs> so everybody bye for now bye bye thank you